Uh, we left uh, somewhere in uh, our previous uh, session in uh, the history of uh, Minneapolis. Uh, it's a uh, diagnosis, uh, analysis, and uh, the solution. And uh, we want just to continue where we left uh, in the previous uh, uh, session. We want just to continue with where we left uh, in the uh, previous session. Where actually we were looking at man, looking at man, man, looking at. Um, man and uh, the prophet being saddened by how the the, the inroads of uh, debates and uh, inroads of uh, looking at uh, human beings who are uh, creeping in in the seventh day uh, advancing and so uh, I want us to pray and then uh, we'll be able to continue where we left uh, in the previous presentation let us pray uh, our Heavenly Father, thank you for this moment and thank you for your grace and uh, minister unto us as we look into your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And so here is where uh, we left uh, in uh, our previous. When uh, I have gone, I have been made to pass over the history of the Jewish nation and have seen where they stumbled because they did not walk in the light. I have been led to realize where as a people would be led if we refuse the light God would give unto us. And so the issue is that uh, if uh, we come in a position that uh, we can receive the light that the Lord is sending unto us and continue looking unto men, then uh, we shall be, uh, we shall repeat the history of the Israelites and uh, uh, the Israelites went uh, 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 into uh, crucifying our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, in 1888, uh, uh, Sister White says that uh, Jesus Christ was crucified again by the refusal of the ministering of the Spirit unto the church. They crucified uh, Jesus Christ in the person of his saints. And so uh, let us uh, continue with the issue of uh, 1888 diagnosis. It is analysis and uh, a solution. We, we read this. This is uh, what we read. That uh, here is uh, Elder Smith and uh, Van Horn who have been handling the truth for years and yet we must not touch this subject because Elder Butler was not here. Elder Kilgo, I was grieved more than I can express to you when I heard you make that remark because I have lost confidence in you. Now we want to get right at what God says, all this terrible feeling I don't believe in. Let us go to the Lord for the truth instead of our showing this spirit of compatibility. God has given me light and you have now you have acknowledged it in times in the past. But now here they believe that uh, Sister White had changed. Brother Gaymet, the brother from Italy, and Brother Conradi should both have received letters from me, but I have not written to them. I have thought, surely I will write, but I did not have the time, and my whole time was taken up by problems this side of the Atlantic. No time for missionary work. Is this doing as God would have us do? Should we not guard the interest of one another and leave out the truth? And when you see someone doing wrong in the place of going to others and thus strengthening him in the wrong way, why not go right to him in the meekness of Christ and tell him what it is to be a Christian? Now we are to labor as those who have to give an account. And so one thing that uh, uh, attended to the Minneapolis conference uh, that uh, had to be tackled is lack of the missional spirit that was developing in the church. And uh, people... Uh, 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 spending so much time uh, in debates and controversy and evil surmising rather than uh, doing the missionary work. And uh, the prophet says that if only we could uh, understand uh, uh, our problem as Laodicean church, thinking that we have everything when we have nothing, then you will appreciate the message of 1888 that uh, the more we continue caring for others, the more the spirit of Christ gets possession of us but this was being lost of it. Because you are looking at the types and the typologies, 
uh, we ask ourselves, is this the same thing that is happening amongst us that we uh, spend much of the time in debate and uh, uh, controversies rather than having the missional spirit? Uh, something that um, you have to understand, the whole Israel went into captivity because they lacked a missionary spirit. The old Israel went into captivity because of the lack of the missionary spirit. And we see the same is happening amongst us, that um, there is a lack of missionary spirit and more of uh, getting involved in the controversies rather than uh, 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 seeing where we have gone wrong and uh, coming back to Jesus Christ and uh, letting him lead uh, the flock as he should be uh, leading it. We continue, uh, it says, a call to deeper study of the word of God. Remember, in the previous session, we looked at even how men were looking unto men, and if this man was talking this, then people were taking sides and people were not involved in a Berea and study of the Bible, but uh, were looking unto men instead of looking unto Christ for revelation. Uh, the prophetess continues to say, Dr. Wagner has spoken to us in a straightforward manner. There is precious light in what he said. Some things presented in reference to the law in Galatians, if I fully understood his position, do not harmonize with the understanding I have had on this subject. But truth will lose nothing by investigation. Therefore, I plead for Christ's sake that you come to the living oracles and with prayer and humiliation seek God. Everyone should feel that he has the privilege of searching the scriptures to him, for himself and he should do this with earnest prayer that God will give him a right understanding of his word that he may know from positive evidence that he does know what is truth. Another thing that uh, is here being recommended is every individual having an upper room experience, having a time with God in personal study, in personal piety, in seeking out what is the truth. This is a spirit that has been taken away from those who are waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no personal piety, there is no prayer, there is no seeking God for ourselves and our families, rather than people even study out so that they may know how to go and compart others, rather than be able to come into truth and their own souls be sanctified. And so uh, personal piety and personal study of the word of God has been removed amongst God's people, and some seek to study so as they may go to debate. Look at what was happening in Minneapolis, 1888, and the, uh, the lead up to that session. Brother Morrison is a debater. He is a man who has not had a daily living experience in the meekness and lowliness of Christ. He is in danger of making false issues and of treating them as realities. He will create strife, and the result will be dissensions and bickerings. He has many things to overcome, and if he fails to overcome them, he will make shipwreck of faith, as did Elder Conrad. It is dangerous to cherish feelings of self-sufficiency. He must have the meekness of Christ. The sanctifying power of the truth must be brought into the sanctuary of his soul. Then he will be a polished instrument in the hands of God to do his work. Now, you can acknowledge as we speak right now, many people have a knowledge of truth, but what kind of a knowledge of truth a knowledge of truth as debaters, as people who cause strife, and uh, a people who are ready to combat each other. And uh, in the book of Romans chapter 16, I'll read you something that Paul says. The book of Romans chapter uh, 16. Uh, uh, Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, bear with me. Uh, be aware of, that, that is Romans uh, 16, 17. We can turn to Romans uh, 16, uh, 17. Here, the word of the Lord says that uh, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. 
we are being told that uh, this spirit that uh, was in Minneapolis, Paul warns about it, being trained debater, searching the truth so that you may go and debate and cause dissension. Paul says that mark them which cause divisions and offenses. This is not the spirit that should be amongst us, that the re main reason for us studying the word of the Lord is to go to debate about it and to cause dissension and division amongst us. But this is, was the spirit that uh, was a lead up to the ministerial institute and uh, the conference of Minneapolis. And as we are looking at the diagnosis, analysis and solution, we have to ask ourselves, is it the same thing that is being repeated amongst us as God's people? that we study the word of God, not so that uh, we may be converted by it, but we may engage uh, in dissension uh, against each other. There's a lot of things to learn in what is happening in uh, Minneapolis. The debating spirit has come into the ranks of Sabbath keepers to take the place of the spirit of God. They have placed finite men where God should be, but nothing can suffice for us but to have Christ dwelling our hearts by faith. The truth must become ours. Christ might be our savior by an experimental knowledge. We should know by faith what it is to have our sins pardoned and to be born again. We must have a higher, deeper wisdom than man's to guide us and amid the peril surrounding our pathway. The spirit of Christ must be in us just as the blood is in the body, circulating through it as a, a vitalizing power. And so, there can be the truth that um, we have the truth, but without the spirit of the truth. The, these are two different things, having the truth and having the spirit of the truth. And there are people uh, like uh, the Pharisees who have uh, uh, the truth, but they are lacking the spirit of the truth. And anything that crosses their path uh, actually um, will be termed as uh, 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 not uh, uh, the truth. And so we should be wary of uh, what happened in Minneapolis, people having a face of truth but lacking the spirit of truth uh, uh, in them and uh, uh, rejecting the message of, of those that uh, they had differences with. More so, these people did not reject the truth because it was truth, but they had their personal uh, uh, grudges with the people who are presenting the truth. This meeting has been the saddest experience of my life. And yet I feel the peace of Christ sustaining me. I see that which fills my heart with very disagreeable forbiddings, forebodings. I had uh, presented before me in Europe chapters in the future experience of our people which are being fulfilled during this meeting. The reason given me was one of Bible piety and of the spirit and mind of Christ. So you see people having truth, but they are lacking the spirit and the piety of the same uh, truth. That is the mind of Christ. The enemy has been placing his mold on the work for years, for it certainly is not uh, uh, the divine mold. We all know better than do as we have done. There is no excuse for this unchrist like spirit. If Christ were abiding in the soul, we could not but reveal Christ forbearance, Christ courtesy, and the love of Christ. All this hard and kind and courteous spirit manifested toward brethren is registered in the books of heaven as manifested towards Jesus Christ, for he identifies his interest with that of his brethren. Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Matthew chapter 25, verses 40. I have pledged myself by a solemn vow to God that uh, wherever this spirit of contempt and unkindness and want of love should exist, I will lay it out in clear lines before my brethren, show them the sinfulness of their cause, and with decided testimony turn the current if possible. If I could not succeed, then I will withdraw myself from the meetings, for I am afraid to be in such a gathering lest I shall be leavened with the prevailing spirit. 1888 material, page 181, paragraph 3 and uh, 4. So there is this issue that... Uh, if we become trained debaters, if we can't become trained dissenters, if we become um, uh, a people who are always embroiled in uh, controversies, we uh, make ourselves become partakers of the same. And the prophetess says that uh, she will lay bare 
uh, the sins of the people and tell them what kind of the spirit is leading them. And if they could not accept it, then she will draw herself from it because she don't want to partake of the same spirit. And this is what we are seeing in these days. That um, there are many groups which are formed on WhatsApp, in Facebook, and all kinds of social platform. And what are people doing? They are not having an upper room experience, but they are training themselves to be debaters. They are training themselves to be uh, compatible in, uh, in the truth. They are having the truth, but lacking the spirit of the truth. And that is why you are seeing that every day there is a split. There are people leaving the groups. There are people leaving WhatsApp and social uh, groups that have been formed. And why? Because they don't want to be partakers of the same spirit that is going on in these groups. And uh, uh, you wonder what is happening, but it's a repetition of uh, Minneapolis uh, 1888. And I, I say, as the prophet says, that I'll have none of these to be part of the groups which are only embroiled in uh, debates and uh, uh, looking down upon each other. And uh, I want the mind of Christ in my life. I don't want to dwell on these negativities and splitting every time. You see, what Satan is doing is uh, making the children of God disunite so much. People may think that the Lord is purifying his church and purifying the movement by people splitting every day and another one forming this group and another one forming this movement. But this is the work of the devil to tear down the movement so that uh, where there is no unity, there is no power. But where there is unity, there is power. And so to be part of uh, a people who will be always splitting and always looking to split at every uh, 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 minute thing, uh, I don't think that uh, I, I want to partake of the same spirit in my life uh, because we have seen enough splits both at the family level, both in, both in the church and both in the movement. Till we are tired of this split and uh, the Lord wants us not to continue in such. Instead, we should be having an upper room experience to change everything that is happening. Uh, I say that respectfully that it will be even a time to pause in these issues of discussing doctrines and just have sessions of having an upper room experience and see if God will not align everything in its order. Continued on in 1888 material, page 186, paragraph 2. Brother Butler wrote me a letter of a most singular purport and made wonderfully strong statements in it. He called these men who God, whom God has appointed to do a special work in his course fledglings. He moreover said that he had received letters from northern and central california saying that they will not send their children to the college if the views of ej wagoner and et jones were brought in well i'll not attempt to tell you all about this matter but I, I learned that you are one who wrote letters of warning to elder butler i asked him if i might see the letter but he said that he had destroyed it strange proceedings is it my brother is the lord leading you or is the enemy working upon your mind as upon the minds of others I have come to the conclusion that this is the cause, that the devil is working on their minds, having evil surmising and then tearing down the evidence of the same. I have not changed my views in reference to the law in Galatians, but I hope that I shall never be left to entertain the spirit that was brought into the general conference. I have not the least hesitancy in saying it was not the spirit of God. If every idea we have entertained in doctrine is truth, Will not the truth bear to be investigated? Will it totter and fall if criticized? If so, let it fall. Let it fall, the sooner the better. The spirit that would close the door to investigation of points of truth in a Christ-like manner is not the spirit from above. So the issue is not here investigating matters and investigating the subject that have been brought forth. But in what kind of spirit should these subjects be investigated? This is the biggest question that we have to ask ourselves. Uh, uh, are we conducting the investigation in the spirit of truth or are we investigating it with uh, human power uh, ready to fight and ready to uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to call others names and uh, to abuse them and to throw condemnations upon them. He continue, she continues to say, you wrote that plans were all laid. You wrote that plans were all laid and that A.T. Jones, Dr. Wagner and W.C. White had things all prepared to make a drive at the general conference. And you warned Elder Butler 
a poor sick man broken in body and in mind to prepare for the emergency. And in that conference, Elder Butler felt called upon to send in telegrams and long letters stand by the old landmarks, just as although the Lord was not present at that conference and would not keep his hand on the work. My testimony was ignored, and never in my life experience was I treated as at the conference, and I give you, my brother, with some other of our brethren, the credit of doing what you could do, you could, to bring this state of affairs about. You may have thought that you were verily doing God's service, but it served the cause of the enemy rather than the cause of God. Brothers and sisters, let us uh, talk about this. That, um, and uh, we have been guilty about this. That uh, when conferences are called for discussion of uh, something that the brethren may be different, you hear that uh, actually brethren are calling each other to say that stand at the old landmarks when there is nothing to stand by. The people are charged in that when they come to the meeting, people have already made stands, no prayers, and if prayers are made, they are prayers of pretension. You hear people pray that, uh, I pray that the Lord will guide this meeting, and I pray that we'll have togetherness, I pray that uh, we will share in the love of Christ. But let the meeting begin, and you will realize that uh, the prayers were hypocritical prayers because everyone wants to stand on what they believe and everyone wants to stand on their preconceived ideas. No one lets the Spirit of Christ lead the meeting. And during the meeting, you hear exchanges that uh, you wonder what kind of prayer was made and what kind of uh, procession is, uh, 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 or proceedings are going on. There's a lot of hypocrisy, there's a lot of uh, 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 pretense, and there's a lot of grudges in the hearts of the people that uh, they are only waiting as it were a, a, a bomb to explode when uh, things don't go their way. And uh, you think that uh, this is something new, and that's what happened in Minneapolis, Minneapolis 1888, and uh, people don't seek the Lord as they should seek the Lord. The prophetess continues, we should not consider that either Elder Butler or Elder Smith are the guardians of the doctrines for Seventh-day Adventists. And there are people who behave even today as the guardians of the Seventh-day Adventist doctrines. And that no one may dare to express an idea that differs from the, theirs. And uh, I have experienced this firsthand that uh, the people will want you to speak exactly what they speak. And if it is varied in any angle, then it is not according to what they believe it is truth. Brethren, this is Minneapolis. It is diagnosis, analysis, and it is solution. The same thing that happened to our brethren at that time is the same thing happening to us. My cry has been, investigate the scripture for yourselves and know for yourself what saith the Lord. No man is to be authority for us. If he has received his light from the Bible, so may we also go to the same source for light and prove to substantiate the doctrines which we believe. The scripture teach that we should give a reason of the hope that is within us with meekness and fear. Brother Haley, it is best for us to look to God and trust in God. The ideas you have given to Elder Butler may have placed Dr. Wagoner, Eti Jones, Willie, and myself in a false light. The information coming as it did from the Pacific Coast had great weight with him. I think we better know what kind of laborers we are connected with whether because they feel like it, it, they will betray the brethren and create suspicion and distrust or will seek to promote peace and harmony between the two great institutions, East and West. The issue of uh, Minneapolis 1888 really broke the union between the West and the East and the brethren in the both uh, 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 places so that uh, they could not see eye to eye. And... Uh, as we continue studying and uh, looking at the time that we are living in, you will find that uh, this is coming again to bring out division between provinces, between continents, so that another continent believes this and another continent believes this, another province in this country believes this and another province believes this, and there is antagonistic power between the two varying 
places so that uh, now we have a church for only this province or this continent and a movement for only this continent or this province. I can assure you the spirit that led uh, the people in Minneapolis 1888 is again leading the people in this time and already we are seeing the fruit of such a movement amongst us as a, a, a people uh, as I speak to you right now. I have now told you that my views are not changed in regard to the law in Galatians. But if we have heard the truth upon this subject, our brethren have failed to be sanctified through it. The fruits are not after Christ's order, but bitter as gall. And uh, that persists today. I have been working as I never worked before. I have felt that something must be done or many souls will be lost. The church in Battle Creek is like the valley of dry bones. They need to be stirred with some power to give them life. Where, why we have had to work and pray and work even to have Brother Jonas obtain a hearing in Battle Creek and many of our leading men were provoked after they heard him talk to think that there were those in responsible position who would close the door to light and to acknowledge keeping out just what they needed. But I have no time to write more. Another issue that was coming in in Minneapolis that uh, the leading brethren will not allow anyone to come and present the ideas he had if they had not scrutinized the ideas. Now, I'm one of the people who are for gospel order, discipline in the church. That uh, no one will just be accepted to stand on the pulpit and uh, preach whatever they want. That is gospel order. Uh, and Paul says that uh, the flock must be are protected from uh, the wolves that are coming in amongst us. But uh, when a brother in our midst, whom we know their conduct so well, are barred from uh, standing on the pulpit because uh, brother so and so thinks that uh, he is the arbiter of truth, you understand that the kingly power is taking place and the Minneapolis spirit is still hovering in the air and leading many amongst us, which should be shunned as leprosy and uh, uh, be repented of. And uh, Sister White continues to say, looking back at Minneapolis, she says this, Great light shines upon this generation. Decided piety and pure living unto God will distinguish the people of God from the world. The Lord will not have his people looking down in discouragement, but looking up to the things that are not seen, which are eternal. Then as his people by faith follow in the path where Christ leads the way, there will be no backsliding but advancing, keeping pace with the opening providence of God. Then shall we have fellowship with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. The world and its treasures sink into insignificance when our eyes are fastened upon the imperishable treasure. Let God be the object of our supreme love. Then a decided influence will go forth from those who believe the truth upon the household and upon the neighborhood and it will be as far-reaching as, far as eternity. There are some differences of views on some subjects, and as it is today, but this is a reason for sharp, but is this a reason for sharp, hard feelings? This is a question that each one of us should ask ourselves. If there are different views on some subject, should this be a reason for sharp, hard feelings? Shall envy and evil surmising and imaginings, evil suspicion, hatred and jealousies become enthroned in the heart? All these things are evil and only evil. Our help is in God alone. Let us spend much time in prayer and in searching the scriptures with a right spirit, anxious to learn and willing to be corrected or undeceived on any point where we may be in error. If Jesus is in our midst and our hearts are melted in tenderness by his love, we shall have one of the best conferences we have ever attended. But is that so? Is that uh, the condition we are in as a people of God? That um, the differences should not cause sharp debates and dissensions and hard uh, feelings and uh, evil surmising in the background against a brother. I have been guilty of this. And uh, I have really prayed this year that uh, such a thing may be taken out of uh, my life that... Uh, if I hear a brother having a varied view about something, I'll not go behind him and start speaking to others about it. I know I have been uh, uh, 
are guilty of this and uh, uh, I'm praying the Lord for forgiveness. But this is the situation. This is the condition that uh, we have found ourselves in, even as uh, one true God believers. That uh, there is a lot of uh, background speaking, there is a lot of evil surmising, and there is a lot of warning others against someone else. And then you find that uh, you are warning somebody about somebody whom you are with in the same ministry. And then we stand side by side on the pulpit and say we are brethren. And you wonder what kind of hypocrisy is this. May the Lord save me and may the Lord save you also of such a, a proceedings amongst us. And we say that we are really in the truth. Now, this is the spirit of Minneapolis still pervading the air, still uh, pervading Seventh-day Adventism. It is a spirit that should be repented of and the people have an exp uh, upper room experience if... Uh, they will uh, see Christ coming in the clouds of the air and be partakers of that uh, golden city that will descend from heaven. And uh, we continue reading. And the Jay Wagner had the privilege granted him of speaking plainly and presenting his views upon justification by faith and the righteousness of Christ in relation to the law. This was no new light, but it was all light placed where it should be in the third angel's message. Praise the Lord. What is the burden? Of that message then, John sees a people. He says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 14, 12. These people John beholds just before he sees the Son of Man having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. Revelation uh, chapter 14, verse 14. If all our ministering brethren could have come to their Bibles together with the Spirit of Christ respecting each other, and with true Christian courtesy, the Lord will have been their instructor. But the Lord has no chance to impress minds over which Satan has so great power. Everything that does not harmonize with their mind and their human judgment will appear in shadows and dark outlines. Now, we are told that uh, the message that we are going to hear the righteousness of Jesus Christ in relation to the law was not a new message, but the old light shining uh, brighter and placed in its uh, rightful position. But the brethren could not accept this because someone else was looking at the issue in a different angle than the one which they had been looking at the issue. And they cried in that meeting, the law, the law, the law. And they said that the law was being done away when Wagona and Etijones had placed the law in its right position, that is in connection with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. I want to pose a challenge to you, brethren. Is it because you are not viewing the matter in the angle that somebody is viewing it, that is why you reject what they have to present? I want just you to scrutinize the things that uh, you have objected and evil surmised about others and debated about them. Have you gone against the truth because it did not come the way you view it and it was presented by another on a different angle or in a different angle than the one that you have been viewing it? You know, we may be surprised in the day of Christ when we are rejected, not because uh, we do not believe something, but we opposed somebody when we had not examined the thing as they had exam examined it. Think about uh, such uh, issues uh, if uh, Christ comes today. Self has far more to do with our religious experience than we imagine. When self is crucified, when the stubborn will, uh, will is subdued, then the language of heart will be, not my will, but thine be done, O God, whose I am and whom I serve. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. None will be as fixed, stars, cold, and unmovable. This selfish, worldly dignity will no longer be maintained. There will be a beautifully blending of purity, elevation, and nobility, which is wisdom from above, and the meekness and lowliness of Jesus Christ. An innocent lamb was chosen as a representation of Christ. And uh, we, we don't have to be goats. We have to be sheep and lambs. Uh, I just add that. 
So when I plainly stated my faith, there were many who did not understand me and they reported that Sister White had changed. Sister White was influenced by her son Willie White and by Elder A.T. Jones. Of course, such a statement coming from the lips of those who had known me for years, who had grown up with the third angel's message and had been honored by the confidence and faith of our people, must have influence. I became the subject of remarks and criticism, but no one of our brethren came to me and made inquiries or sought any explanation from me. We tried most earnestly to have all our ministering brethren who were rooming in the house meet in an unoccupied room and unite our prayers together, but did not succeed in this but two or three times. They chose to go to their rooms and have their conversation and prayers by themselves. They did not seem to be any opportunity to break down the prejudices that was so firm and determined. We had no chance to remove the misunderstanding in regard to myself, my son, and E.J. Wagona and Eti Jones. You, you haven't seen a thing yet as uh, we speak and as we stand in the world history right now. You can imagine people coming together in a conference to discuss some important issues on the matter of uh, righteousness by faith. And instead of having an upper room experience and counseling together and praying together, some groups develop in that meeting. And one group meets in their room, another one meets in the room, and another one is in the hall of presentation, and everyone is doing their own thing because of prejudices. You wonder if this is happening among us and if it will ever happen. But we are told in Ecclesiastes 1.9, there is nothing new under the sun. What has been is what shall be, and the Lord requireth of the history of the past. And uh, if uh, we are not careful, we shall see this happening among us very soon. People gathering in different groups and not associating and they are in a conference where divisions and differences have to be uh, are removed. You understand on the day of Pentecost, they were in one room, in one accord, and praying and removing their differences and all this stuff. And then the uh, former rain happened to them. But we are expecting the latter rain to happen among us, and we are gathered as it were in a conference, and everyone is in their own group discussing this and this, and they cannot pray with the, their brethren. And you wonder what kind of conference is this? You wonder what kind of meeting is this? What have we come to do? But uh, to manifest the contempt we have for each other in the unity that Christ prayed for in the book of John chapter 17. Continued on in 1888, materials page 220, paragraph 2. The remark was made, if our views of Galatians are not correct, then we have not the third angel's message. So you see how the book of Galatians was connected with the third angel's message, which is um, uh, pointing people to Christ, receiving his righteousness, which is manifested in obedience to his commandments. And so the brethren in Minneapolis, what actually they thought is that Wagona and Jonas were doing away with the commandments of God and preaching the message of love only to be received and not the obedience to the Ten Commandments. And so... This was a great issue, and Uriah Smith said in Butler that we stand with the older uh, uh, landmarks, which is the law of God. And so they said that uh, there is nothing uh, that uh, if, we believe, if our views of Galatians are not correct, then we have not the third angel's message. And our position goes by the board. There is nothing to our faith. I said, brethren, here is the very thing I have been telling you. This statement is not true. So men... And women held tenaciously to this preconceived misunderstanding that if their views on Galatians were not correct, then they did not have the third angel's message. And that is why they fought the message of Wagona and uh, Jonas so uh, ferociously. But Sister White is saying, I have been telling you that this statement is not true. It is an extravagant, exaggerated statement. If it is made... In the discussion of this question, I shall feel it my duty to set this matter before all that are assembled, and whether they hear or forbear, tell them the statement is incorrect. 
The question at issue is not a vital question and should not be treated as such. The wonderful importance and magnitude of this subject has been exaggerated. For this reason, through misconception and perverted ideas, we see the spirit that prevails at this meeting, which is unchristlike and which we should never see exhibited among brethren. There has been a spirit of Pharisaism uh, coming in among us, us, which I shall lift my voice against wherever it may be uh, revealed. And so I'm just taking you th slowly through the 1888 materials and uh, see how people are responding to things uh, and uh, the reactions. And uh, you will find that the young ministers who came to that meeting left so confused. They did not know what to take to their churches. And so the message that the delegates could have taken to the churches really was not taken. And the Lord was hurt with such uh, proceedings. When they came into the meeting in the morning, I was surprised to hear Elder uh, make the kind of speech he did before a large audience of believers and unbelievers, a speech which I knew could not be dictated by the Spirit of the Lord. He was followed by Elder, uh, who made remarks of the same order before Brother uh, Dash began this talk, which was all calculated to create sympathy which I knew was not after God's order. It was a human, but not divine. It was human, but not divine. And uh, for the first time, I began to think it might be we did not hold correct views after all upon the law in Galatians, for the truth required no such a spirit to sustain it. And so the people who are claiming that they had the truth about the law in Galatians made even Sister White start doubting if really they had the correct view on the issue of Galatians. And uh, it's a time that we ask ourselves, do we have a correct view of things? And how do we know if we are having a correct view of things? The spirit that attends to what we believe. If it is truth, then he said, sanctify them with the truth, the truth is your word. And uh, if we believe something, then if the fruits of Galatians 5.22 are not attending to it, then we may know that uh, in some way or another we have been deceived by what we believe. It is a time that we should question. If the truth we believe is not sanctifying unto the soul, then uh, brethren, brothers and sisters, we are in trouble for the truth or uh, about the truth that uh, uh, we believe. We read on, I saw, as I saw that the hearts which, with which I longed to be in harmony were padlocked by prejudice and unbelief, I thought best for me to leave them. My purpose was to go from Minneapolis the first of the week. Brother Kilgo came with a request that I should speak the next day, but I said, no, my brother, I can say nothing that many of my ministering brethren consider to be of any value to them. I must not work and exhaust my strength needlessly. I must go away and see what the Lord has for me to do elsewhere, for I know I have a message to bear to uh, his people. A good work has been done in Battle Creek. The Lord has abundantly blessed me, and I desire that everyone shall have this blessing. But I have had to fight for every inch of ground that we have gained here at Battle Creek. The brethren were not going to ask Brother Etijones to preach in the tabernacle. I felt deeply stirred with indignation at the persistent efforts to close the door to every ray of heaven's light. I have carried the heaviest load that I have ever borne in Battle Creek, but we have gained a measure of victory. Still, there must be a more thorough work done. There must be seen a spirit of conviction that um, will make it manifest that we have been born again. There must be a spiritual revolution throughout the churches that fruits unto righteousness may be seen in our daily life. But this was not being seen amongst us as a people. Uh, the spirit that the people came in uh, in the Minneapolis, uh, I'm sorry for the destruction, we are having children having their Sabbath school in the background. The, the spirit that we see being manifested in Minneapolis uh, is uh, a spirit that you see permeating the people even the time that uh, uh, we are living in. That uh, 
people have padlocked their hearts unto the reception of the truth. Why? Because they think that uh, something is so dangerous unto them that they keep uh, the padlock to their hearts and uh, 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 this has uh, 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 made the Lord not reveal more of himself in the church, but uh, has left the church uh, comfortless and without the truth and uh, people are wallowing in the mud of the past. That is uh, the spirit that carried the day in the uh, Minneapolis. Uh, just as we draw to uh, a conclusion, when the resolution was urged upon the conference that nothing should be taught in the college contrary to, what, to that which has been taught, I felt deeply, for I knew whoever framed that resolution was not aware of what he was doing. And, one, and when one of the elders of the church was asked if Elder Jones was not to be invited to speak and give his views on national reform and the Sunday law, the answer was that Elder uh, so and so thought he had better not be invited to speak, for he took rather strong positions. And the arrangement were made to shut him out of the school for fear something should come in that would be at variance with what has been taught in the school. Was this a conscientiousness inspired by the Spirit of God? Certainly there was not the Spirit of inspiration upon you from God, but from another source. So, the issue goes beyond the law in Galatians. If you are really following what is happening in Minneapolis, and we are in page 258, paragraph 4, 1888, materials, that even Jonas and Wagona being invited to give views on national, on, uh, uh, national reform and the Sunday law was not accepted because many had but locked themselves uh, against the law in Galatians. And now when it came to giving views on national reform and the Sunday law, the conference leaders could not accept this because the, the same person whom they had differed with on the law in Galatians was the same person who was to speak on national reform and, uh, uh, and the Sunday law. And you understand that uh, the Lord made the things happen the way they happened in that uh, after they had refused the law in Galatians, they had refused to hear uh, the issue on national reform and uh, the, the subject of the Sunday law. There was the Blair law that was going on in the parliament and it had to be passed. And the children of God were not aware and prepared of what the devil was doing in the background. And then the Lord took Etijones from them and uh, made him to stand before the parliament and defend uh, 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 the liberty of conscience against the Sunday law which was uh, being enacted nationwide. And so... You, you can start sensing what the church was uh, like in that time on dwelling on this division and shutting out at Jonas and Wagona. They, uh, uh, they came into a, a point they were not prepared even for the Sunday law. And so when it was to be passed in the, uh, 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 in the land of America, the Lord uh, prevented it happening because he could not allow the Sunday law to be enacted when the church was not ready. And uh, today we are in the same situation. We see the forces moving behind and uh, they are conscientious and conscientious and uh, they are trying to pass the laws even to bind man from preaching and uh, the third angel's message is going uh, 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 on in the four corners of the world. But uh, what, are the what is the church doing? What are the people who know the truth doing? They are in arguments, debates, evil surmising against each other and shutting others who have better information on the issue from coming to present uh, such a views. And so we have to see when, where we have fallen and repent of the spirit that uh, has been leading the church even uh, in the period that we are living in. Sister White says, I must speak to you in reference to the meetings in Minneapolis. I at one time decided to leave the meeting because I saw and felt the strong spirit of opposition that prevailed. People dissent at variance with the, the law in Galatians, which was part of the third angel's message, the righteousness of Jesus Christ and the law being put in their rightful position. They are against the national reform message. They are against 
A.T. John is presenting on the Sunday laws. I could not for one moment acknowledge the spirit which moved with a controlling power upon Brother Morrison and Brother Nicola. I cannot for a moment question what manner of spirit you were of. Certainly it was not the spirit of God, and lest you should continue in this de deception, I now write to you. 1888 material, page 277, paragraph 1. The night after I had decided to not remain longer in Minneapolis, in a dream or vision of the night, I cannot tell certainly which, a person of tall commanding appearance brought me a message and revealed to me that it was God's will for me to stand at my post of duty and that God himself would be my helper and sustain me to speak the words he should give me. He said, for this work the Lord has raised you up, his everlasting arms are beneath you. From this meeting decisions will be made for life or for death. Note that everyone need to perish but spiritual pride and self-confidence will close the door that Jesus and his Holy Spirit's power shall not be admitted. They shall have another chance to be undeceived and to repent, uh, confess their sins and come to Christ and be converted that he shall heal them. And so uh, the Minneapolis conference turned into fully-fledged Laodicean state. The hearts were padlocked, and then pride and self-confidence closed the door. Now, you read the message to Laodicean, Laodicean and uh, uh, you find that uh, Christ is at the door knocking so that anyone may let him in and he may sup with them. But this in Minneapolis was not acknowledged. And so the church became a full-fledged Laodicean. And that is what he has remained until the time that I'm speaking right now. If God is doing something, he's doing to individuals and not to the whole church or the whole movement. But the Lord wants to do something for the church, not only for the individuals. And he says that there will be a chance. That is then in 1888. Now, the issue that we have, the question that we have to ask ourselves, has the Lord given me or given the church another time to repent? And uh, I can certainly say, yes, by these messages coming to us again, the Lord is offering us chance individually and as a church to repent of the spirit of Minneapolis and experience the latter rain that was withheld at that time, and then we'll be able to sound the loud cry. Lastly, uh, the angel told E.G. White, follow me. I followed my guide, and he led me to the different houses where brethren made their homes, and he said, hear the words he has spoken, for they are written in the book of records, and these words will have a condemning power upon all who act apart in this work, which is not after the spirit of wisdom from above, but after the spirit that descended not from above, but it's from beneath. I listened to words uttered that ought to make every one of those ashamed who uttered them. Sarcastic remarks were passed from one to another, ridiculing their brethren, A.T. Jones, E. Wagoner, and Willie White, and myself. My position and my work were freely commended upon by those who ought to have been engaged in the work of humbling their souls before God and setting their own hearts in order. There was seemingly a fascination in brooding over imaginary wrongs and expressions of imagination of their brethren and their work, which had no foundation in truth, and in doubting and speaking and writing bitter things as the result of skepticism and question and unbelief. This is what was happening in the rooms of those who were gathered in Minneapolis. I could but have a vivid picture in my mind from day to day of the way reformers were treated, how slight difference of opinion seemed to create a frenzy of feeling. Thus it was in the betrayal, trial, and crucifixion of Jesus. All this had passed before me point by point. The satanic spirit took control and moved with power upon the human hearts that had been open to doubts and to bitterness, wrath and hatred. All this was prevailing in that meeting. I decided to leave the meeting, leave Minneapolis. I refused to speak again to our people, but consented to speak to the Scandinavians. And so lastly, Christ could have done nothing during his earthly ministry in saving fallen man, she says. 
if the divine had not been blended with the human. The limited capacity of man cannot define this wonderful mystery, the blending the two, of, uh, the two natures, the divine and the human. It can never be explained. Man must wonder and be silent. And yet, man is privileged to be a partake of this of the divine nature and in this way he can to some degree enter into the ministry. This wonderful exhibition of God's love was made on the cross of Calvary. Divinity took the nature of humanity and for what purpose? That through the righteousness of Christ humanity might partake of the divine nature. This union of divinity and humanity which was possible with Christ is incomprehensible to human minds. The wonderful things to take place in our world the greatest events of all ages are incomprehensible to world minds. They cannot be explained by human senses. The powers of heaven shall be shaken. Christ is coming in power and great glory, but his coming is not such a mystery as the things to take place before that event. Man must be a partake of the divine nature in order to understand in this evil time. When the mysteries of satanic agencies are at work, only by the divine power, United with the human can souls endure through these times of trial, says Christ. Without me, you can do nothing. Then there must be far less of self and more of Jesus. And this is what was missing in Minneapolis, a far less of self and more of Jesus. And then Christ will have a way to work in the lives of the people. Looking back at um, Minneapolis 1888 really gives us the sad story of uh, what the church could have been but it never uh, uh, became. We can learn from these stories as we shall continue presenting uh, 1888 it is diagnosis, analysis and solution because this is the same thing that the church is in. It is being prevented from partaking of the latter rain because there is no less of self, but there is more of self and self-confidence and uh, thinking that we are better than the other. And then uh, uh, this brings about contentions, de uh, um, uh, debates and uh, insinuations, evil surmising and warning the other against each other. And yet we are standing on the same pulpit. I pray that uh, the Lord of heaven will be able to rebuke us and uh, correct us and admonish us in his ways so that uh, what happened in Minneapolis may not happen to us. The spirit of Satan that took control of the people and the preventing of uh, the latter rain falling uh, to the church of God. And so individually and corporately, let us work upon our own characters that we may not be found uh, 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 hindering the work of uh, the Lord uh, uh, that he needs to do at such a time as this. May the Lord bless us. And uh, shall we close um, with uh, a word uh, of uh, uh, prayer? Abba Father in heaven, thank you, and uh, your will be done on earth as it is done uh, uh, in heaven. We want to move in unity as the ranks of angels move in unity with one accord. But uh, this cannot happen if uh, self does not uh, die in our lives and Christ be uplifted. We need again to be pointed to Jesus Christ and his uh, much less love upon us and so take charge of uh, every word that cometh from our lip that we may not be found wanting in the balance of the sanctuary this is my prayer in christ jesus name amen